just a short trip from one of the world's most famed golf layouts, Augusta National, that we find Palmetto Golf Club, a course with one of the most celebrated histories in golf stateside. Palmetto Golf Club's the second oldest 18-hole golf course in America. Augusta National, one of the world's most famed golf layouts. And just a short drive away, our course tour for this week. Across the Savannah River is Aiken County, South Carolina, and it's here that we find one of the most remarkable golf clubs in the history of the United States. Palmetto Golf Club was founded in 1892, making it one of the oldest golf clubs countrywide. Palmetto Golf Club is the second oldest 18-hole golf course in America, somewhere between the fifth and the twelfth oldest golf club in America. When Harry Varden toured America, he played here and they wouldn't let him in the clubhouse and wouldn't let him play golf in his knickers. You know, it's a traditional club. Uh, Twelve of the original founding members at Augusta National were members here. And that's one of the reasons Augusta National was built in Augusta and not in Atlanta. Aiken County has an interesting history as a popular winter holiday spot at the close of the 19th century. A tour of the clubhouse photo board goes a long way to describing the significance that Palmetto Golf Club has played in the history of the region. Each year, the club stages the Devereux Milburn Trophy, where previous champions have included the likes of the legendary Byron Nelson, Henry Picard, and another of the game's true greats, Ben Hogan. Other great players include England's Harry Varden, Sam Sneed, and Ben Crenshaw. Bing Crosby was one of the many regular celebrity visitors, not to mention royal family visits from the Duke of Windsor and Prince Charles. Fred Astaire played here, um, Bing Crosby, in fact, Bing's first family, they went to school in Aiken at Aiken Prep School. The tour used to go from Jacksonville, Florida, to Wilmington, North Carolina, to Greensboro, and back to Augusta, and Hogan would play golf here the two weeks. And he actually said that three, four, and five were the three toughest pars fours in succession he ever played, and five, seven, and 13 are three of his 18 favorite holes. Today, the course still enjoys close ties with Augusta National Golf Club, a relationship that began in the 1930s. Mackenzie put in the greens here, so in his book, The Spirit of St. Andrews, it's almost like he's telling you what he's doing out here. He was writing that book about the same time that he did the greens out here. There are a lot of false fronts on them. I had a member that had a four-foot birdie putt, and his next chip was from 30 yards off the green. And as the current membership suggests, it's a course that is as well respected as its lengthy history indicates. We probably have more golf course architects that are members here than any golf course in America. It's a golf course that you look at the scorecard and you say, well, I'm going to tear it up. And then you walk off the golf course, shot 82, and you can't believe, you know, you played that bad. With such greats of the game as Ben Hogan ranking Palmetto amongst his favorite designs, it's little surprise to find a tough challenge as we make it out on the course. Three is an extremely long hole by modern standards. I think it probably plays a 420, but you, you want it to stay a little right off the tee, but not too far right. There's a bunker out there that you're only going to be in at once because the next time you play, you're going to make sure you never get there. And then you're going to have a medium to long iron into a green that's very narrow. And if you miss it, you better miss it in front. If not, you're going to be, you know, chipping forever. We've got a bunker around the green that, as most of the bunkers around here are pretty severe, you don't want to get in them. The greens complexes at this golf course are so severe. Um, if somebody grows up playing golf here, their short game is going to be second to none. Next up, a Ben Hogan favorite. Number four is a hole that Hogan played down the uh, left-hand side. There's a flat spot there, and he would play an eight-iron for his next shot. And that's a hole right now that if the pin's on the right back and you're anywhere left of it, you better be real careful, because if not, you're going to be chipping 30 feet up the hill again. Four is a hole that goes by a variety of nicknames, including the Valley of Death. It's just an area that slopes off. I, I guess it's like the 18th at St. Andrews. 
that over the years, members have coined little names. You know, some of them are printable and some of them aren't. <laughs> There's no time to catch your breath here as we continue on to five. Five is an extremely long hole. You can hit it just about anywhere off the tee as long as it's not in the trees. But your second shot better not be long. You better be, you know, front of the green or chipping up the hill. But if you get it to the back of the green, you could putt it off the green. The golf course was just unbelievably hard. Up next, and the challenge is straightforward, but far from simple. Seven, Bobby Jones says, was the best mental play par three ever played. It's 165 yards to a green that's very small and very hard. And a lot of times, the members just aim for the bunker to the left of the green and then just hope to chip it on and make the putt. But if, if you hit it right of the green, it's going 40 or 50 yards down the hill, leaving you with an impossible chip shot to a green that's about the size of a dinner plate. On to the back nine, and the course's hard-earned reputation doesn't give any room for respite. Number 11. The drop hole, it's a neat little hole. It's 155 yards if the wind's blowing, and it's downhill considerably, but um, we've had tournaments out here where people have had to hit two irons off the tee, or you can hit sometimes a flip wedge. It just depends on the wind. The difference in the tree complexes and the lake uh, a lot of times the wind will come across the lake there and you stand up in the tee and you know you don't see anything moving and then all of a sudden you hit it and it takes your ball way right and here you are either in another bunker with an impossible shot or a chip shot that there's no way of keeping it on the green you're going to just chip it into another bunker. And we finish with one of Ben Hogan's all-time favourite holes, 13. It's an extremely uphill hole where you're gonna hit a mid iron to a long iron to an elevated green that's harder than Chinese arithmetic. It's just very severe. You play your drive out there, uh, most people hit it to the 170 yard marker. And then from there, it's you know anywhere from a five iron to a three or four iron to the green that's elevated and it's got a lot of roll off areas that if you don't hit it perfectly, it's going off. There's no doubt this course presents a formidable challenge. With the latest club and ball technology, the layout may lack some bite off the tee, but it more than makes up for any lack of length with small, elevated and undulating greens. The competitive course record is an almost untouchable 59. Then that was shot by the local All-American Dane Burkhardt in 2005. For most players, anything resembling their handicap will be a very good day. If you're out here playing a casual round from the member's tees, you, you'll feel good about your round after you finish. The further back you go, it's just going to beat you up. We held a college tournament and uh, a state amateur out here. And the year before, they, they played at a Fazio golf course at Hilton Head. 14 under par won it. And in four rounds here, we had one person under par, one person even par, and then all the scores went up from there. So make a visit to Palmetto Golf Club if you're ever in South Carolina. You'll learn plenty about the fine art of Mackenzie course design, and indeed the history of one of the state's most renowned golf clubs and areas.